Hey guys, Melissa here. I'm just getting out of work. Um, so my boss actually asked me to do a little bit more work, and I did, and then I offered to do more work. So I actually got more time in. So ladies, take the extra time to find more work. So um, I'm a mother of five grown sons, and um, there was one extra challenge with my beard co repairs just because of some situations. So, um, so I had already signed, I had already talked to somebody about working tonight at a different place to do a double. And they had me, but they were like, oh, we just had something happen. So I was like, okay. And she's like, I'll, I'll call you when I can bring you in. So I'm thinking, uh, geez, you know, I just asked, I just changed my schedule over here so I could work over there. And I'm going to end up losing both jobs. So I just said to this guy, I said, <clears throat> yeah, the person who wanted me to work tonight had, has, um, you know, said that they didn't need me tonight so I can stay late tonight. So um, my elastic's super tight. I don't usually put on this tight. So um, what I wanted to say is, oh, I've had my hair up all day. It's probably a total mess. So what I want to say is, what is that? That's a weird curl, huh? I used to curl my hair with a curling iron. Um, let me see. It's got natural wave. So anyways, um, oh my goodness. So basically what I'm going to say is, you know, so there was a time the last two years, you know, my husband had left us. He just, somebody asked us in the comments what happened and, um, he just left. He just didn't even have a conversation. He was just like, you know, we had planned on working together over here. The landlord wanted like two to five hundred more dollars. He put our rent up by three hundred dollars. So people will be like, you know, people are homeless and it's their own fault. It's not always their fault. There is like total greed out there. So we had a landlord who was pretty greedy. And I remember him saying, this was like right around COVID. He's like, hey, I want to come in and he was all up and down with everything. He's like, I think I want to come in today and have the real estate people do a uh, come in and do a assessment today. And I'm like, hey, you know, Mike, we are like sick today. This is when I was sick from COVID and I am never sick, never, ever sick, really. Not besides like a migraine or, you know, the basics. But I was extremely sick. My husband didn't care. I went to his work and I'm like... I can barely stand up right now. I'm like, I'm so dizzy. And he didn't care. He did not care. And he just was screaming at me about something at work. And so, <clears throat> so then he got sick. And I think he knew what it was like now to get sick. Um, he didn't have it as bad as I did, but I was pretty sick. And then when I had my breast cancer scare, he didn't care. He did not care. All he cared about was a, how I text him. He's like, all you did was do a one word text. That's all you did, and that's all he cared about. So, um, so I came over here, and I'm like, okay, I will find a place for us over here because we are not paying two to five hundred dollars for this place. Two to five hundred more. So we got the place. It was a pretty good deal. Sixteen hundred, three bedroom on like a pond slash lake. Um, gave our boys the opportunity to go kayaking biking in the country instead of the city and all this stuff, right? Um, I laid down my life. I worked so he could have a garage, okay? So then he wanted to keep the place and I'm like, we are not giving this guy another dime. You know, you have me in charge of the finances and he's not getting another dime. And then he was like, oh, the landlord's like, oh, I think I might actually want to sell. And he was pushing us to buy. And I'm like, no, we are not buying. We're not buying from you. We're not buying this place. It was full of mold. One of my sons had a lot of, um, <clears throat> like, allergies and stuff from, like, the mold. I even called, like, a mold specialist. And I'm like, you know, this this is affecting my son. My husband didn't care. So, um, so anyways, we end up agreeing. I'm going to Colorado. We agreed to it. It's not like I took our son and left the state without him knowing. We agreed to it, and I get here, and I'm struggling, right? I'm struggling. I'm trying to make ends meet. I'm trying to figure out 
what to do, how to, you know, how to deal with stuff because we had, I had a plan that once I got, you know, some money saved and some things in order, then we would go forward with housing. And he didn't do anything. He stayed in his truck. And then I don't even get like a conversation. I get in September of 2022, I moved here in May. I get, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you. And I'm like, what is going on with you? So then he didn't want to talk to me. All this stuff is going on. And then, um, yeah, and then he filed in February. So it's going to be a year coming up. Well, it was a year in February since we've been in court. And I haven't really done much. I've just been, like, objecting to everything. But I haven't really played his game. All he wants to do is argue. And Kevin Leandro, all he wants to do is have an opportunity to show off his attorney skills in court. So I told the court, <clears throat> yeah, just let the judge decide. I took the cross petition. I had a cross petition for divorce. I took it off, and then I'm like, you know, just he can, the judge can decide what's going to happen here. So I had gone for child support because my husband said he would not pay. So um, they said they could not find him in New Hampshire. I'm like, what do you mean you can't find him? He's right at Stratum Tire, right? He's been there like 18, 20 years. I think he's making $20 an hour now after like 20 years. That makes no sense, right? So um, he sent $120 after telling me he wanted to take care of us. He wanted me to be home with my kids. He wanted me to homeschool. Many conversations about me working. He didn't want me to work. Luckily, I worked anyways when my um, our firstborn was born. I had put down my career in hairdressing because I was now pregnant with my firstborn son and we didn't think I could get pregnant. Um, so I was finishing school while I was pregnant and then I went to hairdressing school. Um, that was actually, wait a minute, I went to hairdressing school and I worked in a salon and I worked at the Common Man restaurant. All three I did and then I was pregnant with my son. And so once he was born and I went to church, um, I actually, it was, I was at the hometown market in Pennacook for only like a week. And I'm like, you know what? I miss my son. I miss him. And I didn't leave there because of just that. My husband, when I was like, look, you need to watch him while I'm working. So he didn't want to watch him. He didn't want to take care of him. He's like, I'm too tired after work. I don't want to take care of him. So I had to be the one to, you know, say, okay, then I'll be taking care of him because if you're tired, I don't trust that you're not going to, like, roll on him at night or fall asleep or you're not watching him very good. So I will stay home. So I stayed home. Then I did some newspaper routes. And then one of my sons was allergic to the newspapers. I shoveled with my kids and I did everything I could, getting resources, everything, and then I worked more later. So even now, as my three sons are grown, and I do have one uh, who was going to go on a missionary trip, and they're like, well, you know, the altitude is really high, and we're just thinking that this might not be the best fit for him right now. And um, so there are just some, you know, concerns with my last one that has made me be a little more attentive to him where the first three were like, okay, you're 18, you're pretty much out the door, you're on your own. Now it's kind of like, well, you know, my 20 year old, yeah, he's got his own life, he's he's doing great. And then this one is doing great too, but it's just kind of like there's been a couple concerns. But um, so now as a, you know, mother of five grown sons, I am just working. So. When you get to that point, and even though it's hard as a single mom, you know, to make sure that you are, you know, I had a minor and I'm like making sure, you know, we are all set over here because my husband left. He didn't want to send money. $120 a week doesn't even take care of rent. He actually wanted me to live off my son so he didn't have to send more money. That's what he wanted. He's like, I'm only going to send $120 and that should be enough for you. He didn't want to take care of us. He wanted my other sons to, you know, to, he wanted to benefit off me living with my sons. 
So if he was just to pay for me and my son, you know, just to take care of his son without us living here together, it would have been a lot more money. So he didn't want to do it. So, and then his mother was like, you need to work because my husband didn't want to work. So this is a man who still has not taken accountability for his actions and we are divorcing and I am looking forward to it because he just has twisted the truth. He's lied. He's done so much damage. And I had a dream about him last night and it was interesting. It was an interesting dream and his mother was trying to get between us again and the witchy woman couldn't get between us because he didn't really... He didn't really want her around. He was using her in my dream, much like life. But anyways, <clears throat> my point to all this is, as you have your kids, you know, keep your hand in the, the workforce to a point so you have some skills. You know, always work on your skills. But when it comes to, you know, if you're married and you're pretty secure, you know, um, I think for the most part, it's best it's best if you can stay home with your kids because you've got the full focus on your family. But there are times where you cannot do that. And so for me, when we needed to bring in extra money, I did do things on the side to bring in extra money. And then, um, you know, as you, you know, your sons are all grown up and they're adults, do what you need to do to get ahead. So for me, it's taking um, extra time, extra work, to plan for retirement, to do things I want, to, you know. Un unfortunately, my husband was supposed to take care of both of us, but he has chosen not to. And, yeah, I mean, I hope he's happy with his $20 an hour. He deserves to, you know, enjoy some money, but so did I, because I work too, and I invested in our marriage quite a bit. So, um, so just, you know, do some do the little things to get ahead so just take an extra hour an extra two hours get another job I have another interview for a third job because DoorDash is not like really dependable I mean it's nice if your vehicles working and everything but mine is old and even though I just you know it's been fixed there's still issues so um, <clears throat> keep working at it keep putting money away Take care of yourself. You're not like a single woman like before you had kids because you still want to give time to your family, right? You still want to be there for your family. So, um, but do do the little things to make a difference and save up your money for retirement. And I do not want to be door dashing at like 70. I saw an older woman yesterday door dashing. And I'm like, I do not want to be that age door dashing. No way. I do not want to do that. So put some money aside and just save up. Okay, thanks for joining me, guys.